Hi everyone, from the beginning of my experience in game development, I was always faced with the problem of making the player fully interact with the game world. It was one of my concerns to know how the AAA games make their character fully interact with the world. Not until 2018, I saw McCann Gelani on Twitter where he showed trailer about his procedural animation and show his amazing world and what he done using procedural animation. I immediately wanted to learn more about this type of animation. So what exactly is procedural animation? This is an animation that is driven by code, so you can have the, the full flexibility of changing the animation in a specific situation of the game or when the player interacts in a specific position in your game environment. So why do you need it exactly? You usually need the animation depend on the player options and what he choose to do. Like he might grab the gun from the ground or the table. Like all these, they are different parts of animations. And maybe you want him to interact like maybe walk on the wall. Maybe a different specific position for, for him. Dodge on the wall for example, walk on the wall, run on the wall. Like the boss might to do animation specifically on the player himself. Like move his up, like attack with his specific limb, like on the player position. Like all these procedural animation, like each one has different position, different options, like the wall, the game would be changed depending on the player position. The boss or the enemy or the AI animation will change depending on the player position or rotation or or what is his position on the wall itself. All that, like what you need is procedure animation. You can do that in fix and using fix animation. So how it is done exactly? Unlike normal animation where you have to rig and make the animation itself in 3D software, procedure animation you have to rig the model itself using the engine you are using. Like for example in Unity you are gonna need to rig the model itself using the engine like Unreal or Unity. How exactly rigging that? Like you might do the bond itself using like 3D software like to present different part and the weight map using 3D software. But when we are talking about like moving the bones and making the animation, like we need constraints and constraints to help you make animation much faster. So when you are when we are talking about constraints, then you have to add them. You have to add this using the engine you are using. This way you can easily make the animation. So the first point is rigging your character and adding constraint using the game engine itself. For example, adding constraint like inverse kinematic and track constraint constraints like where the bond will look exactly a specific object or a specific direction for example and all that you have to do it from within the game engine itself we will make all the animation in code forms like for example you need to like you need you want the character to walk so what exactly walking is is like moving the leg up and moving down like that so when you are doing that you will make the function in the code itself like first function move the leg up to specific position and then move the leg down so move the leg down to specific position like that and depending on your like the layer of your vectors between the positions like it depends how it change all that can be done using like the code to present this stuff then after coding your animation using like Visual Studio or any program or stuff from within like your game engine then the code will first take information from the game itself from the game world environment and move dependent on it. so when you are like you want the you move the leg up using the first function then the second function will move the leg down however where exactly the the leg will move down on the wall itself like you don't have you have no idea um, the player might be on tra a terrain a mountain in a river you don't you have no idea what he exactly gonna be so how it's done the code itself will take information from the environment around the player so how exactly like you gonna take information from the game wall it's a symbol like I'll make a simple example. Like in real life robots or vehicle, the way they usually take information from the world around them, like they use sensors. Sensors like they give the robots or the vehicle the information it needs to move around or like it's, is it close to wall is it what's around it exactly so we can use the same concept in game designing in game engines so what is it exactly we have something called raycast so basically raycasting is very simple where you have a start point 
you cast line in specific direction and when the line hits something you will get information about what he hit for example if it hit an object like what exactly did it hit like what the tag for it like is it the ground is it like an enemy is it like a wall you might also like if it's ground like take the rotation for it like what's the normal you just so you're gonna use this just to cast it and get information from the world around the player you are developing or the character you are developing another method that is used which basically is using the collider casting this is in some situation is more helpful than like ray casting ray casting because you have volume unlike like you have line so when you are casting a volume you can check like for example a gap maybe check multiple collider maybe check multiple surfaces maybe check like so many different things like each one has their own uses maybe i need it not to go through this gap maybe i don't want him to walk through like to check like this small gap between the the ground itself don't want the player to go between these gaps so I'm gonna do a casting, casting a sphere collider for example like so he can't go through this cab then after like getting this information around the player like we can take like okay move the leg down basically like, taking the information from around it then playing exactly the best animation for like move to the ground move to the wall etc and this help us to make the animation code react however we want for any solution because we are designing the code to basically like gain information from the environment in our game world then produce specific animation for this situation like maybe go on the wall run or maybe like specific attack if we are designing a bosses or an AI the program that is mostly used for this type of animation, like procedural animation, basically like any game engine, like I said before, like it is inside the game engine, like Unity, Unreal, also like the code itself inside the coding, like Visual Studio, Mono, anything you code on, and the game engine itself, because like Unreal has its own blueprint, like you can do also procedural animation using blueprint also. The advantage for this type of animation that it is very flexible and you can change basically everything you are making like the animation you have the full flexibility for the animation to interact in the world the player choices like it's infinite like okay maybe it's the wall upside down what what the player should do what the character should do like how it's gonna react to this specific position all of this like if there is a wall in, in front of it and there's and a roof how it's gonna react how the camera will react everything like that you have the full flexibility to do anything you want like and you and as i said like the animation itself is done using code so you have the full flexibility to change on that however the disadvantage for it that is a lot of work like it's so much work for a single animation that is done for basically like the my animation using the procedure spider if you have seen it like it took me over thousand line of code to make it without counting like how many days it's meant to be in debugging and stuff like that it's only like only like walking animation and it is thousand line of code so it's basically the same advantage for it that takes long long time to make and hard to debug because you have like if you face like a specific error error in a specific position like it is kind of hard to debug because like you can have like thousand line of code it is flexible but it's hard to debug because we have thousand line of code but it is possible and you can clean any type of error because like you have the full control of it. and that's what's good about it like it is possible but it takes a long long time the conclusion like procedure and machine is very flexible change the, you can change it however you want what you expect your player to do you can do a specific animation for it like if you are designing a boss like what the character might do he might run he might grab something he might throw something at the boss like every single thing you have choice on but it costs a lot of time to make the animations for it and it's, it takes long time also to debug if you have specific error that occurred while you are developing this procedure animation and this is what exactly procedure animation mean and how it is done with that thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoy it and i'm thinking like just as a credit point, there's a third type of animation, which is like I like to call the mixed animation, where you are taking the advantages of both type of animation, like the basic animation that we know and the procedural animation, and mix them together. And hopefully, I'm gonna do this video soon in the future. But right now, the next video I'm gonna do is is explaining my experience in procedural animation and how I made like my 
spider animation for example and what is my experience with it and what problem I faced along the way and how I solved these problems and errors. With that, thank you so much for watching and hopefully see you again in the next video. Goodbye.